You may have watched the last video that I made about the cycle of love addiction. And today I wanna to talk about the cycles of love avoidance. So these two cycles are often two sides of the same coin. And somebody who finds himself in a love addiction cycle generally pairs up with somebody who finds themselves in a love avoidance cycle because their needs are so similar but opposite in the same way in terms of how they're expressed. So let's jump into the cycle of love avoidance. Who meets criteria to be in this cycle? This is someone who generally enters into a relationship out of a feeling of obligation or duty. So they may want to be in a relationship, but they may also find themselves kind of giving people the Heisman, keeping them at arm's length time and time again. But what compels them into a relationship is this idea that they don't want to hurt someone and they recognize that there's someone who cares about them and has a need to be in a relationship with them. So they get some perks out of it, but generally somebody in a love avoidance cycle goes into this relationship because they think they should, or it's expected of them, or they're going to be a bad guy, a bad girl, a bad person if they don't. So this duty or obligation based romance is really sort of the, the, the underlying compelling faculty of the love avoidance cycle. All right. So they enter into the relationship out of a sense of obligation. And then what happens is they kind of create this wall of seduction, if you will. It's not necessarily a sexy seduction, but in other words, they are aware of the expectations put on them by the person who they're in a relationship with. Now, it's not always so explicitly said or known, but you know they get a sense of what this person needs and they're able to pour themselves into that mold because they likely had a parent who did the same thing. They likely had a parent growing up whose emotional needs usurped their own growing developmental needs as a child. So that young child learned how to perform, if you will, for their parent and be the person their parent needed them to be. This is how they show up in adult romantic relationships too. So it's very burdensome to show up in a way that's not your authentic self. Just ask anyone who's tried it. And what happens is over time, when somebody is in this mold of who they think they should be, again, should be, it's their duty, it's their obligation to show up this way, they start to feel angry, overwhelmed, and resentful. And over time, those feelings are just so big that the levy has to break at some point. And that's exactly what happens in the love avoidance cycle. The pressure to be this person that they're expected to be, whether it's been explicitly or implicitly said, is just too much. But they're very committed unconsciously to the idea of them being a really good person. So it isn't always safe for them to express their anger or their boundaries or their resentments directly. So instead, what happens is they go into this obsessive cycle about any or everything outside of the relationship or away from their partner because they need a break, they need space, but they don't know how to ask for it successfully because again, they're really committed to showing up as they're supposed to, as they think they're supposed to. So what happens in this ruminative cycle of every and anything other than the relationship, they might get really committed to work projects and be super hyper obsessed about those. They might be really focused on infidelities. You know, this is when somebody might start cheating or resume cheating if they did in the past. Um, they might dive deep into a substance abuse or other kind of um, behavioral addiction like a gambling disorder uh, or an eating disorder. They might start getting really focused on whatever the activities of their kids might be and volunteer to be the new den mother or den father. They might get really preoccupied with somebody else's drama, their best friend or family of origin, and suddenly need to show up for those people in a way that isn't typical for them. You know, they want any kind of good enough plausible reason to divert their attention away from the relationship and away from their partner so that they can get the break and the relief in their nervous system from all that overwhelm. So eventually, focusing outside the relationship does its job and they're able to feel calm and soothed enough in their nervous system that they can return to their baseline or return to the relationship either with the same person 
or a new partner, but again, from a place of obligation or duty or expectation. When somebody's in a love avoidance cycle, often the underlying fear that they have, the primary underlying fear is intimacy because they don't have good boundaries with their limits and they don't know how to express themselves in a way that feels effective. So their fear is that if they give any bit of themselves to a partner, that partner is gonna engulf them and take all of them and be all consuming. And that's often what happens when you fail to set boundaries. A secondary fear is being abandoned. And so this is what puts someone in that binded situation or bound situation, excuse me, of having to choose between their own authenticity and the role that a partner wants them to be in because they don't wanna be alone but they also don't wanna betray themselves. So it's a really uncomfortable situation and that's why all of that overwhelm, resentment and anger tends to build up and build up and they act out sideways. So I hope this is helpful and go check out the love addiction video if you haven't seen that already and definitely shoot me a DM if you have any questions.